Hi guys, I'm back. And I'm feeling a lot better. Thank you everyone for all the well wishes. I really appreciate it. You're so sweet and kind and thoughtful. And probably helped me to get better a lot faster. Even though it took like three and a half weeks for me to get better. I still have a little bit of a dry cough and I don't think my voice is quite back to normal. It gets a little scratchy at times. But I feel much, much better. Thank y'all for all the kind thoughts and well wishes. I appreciate that. Um, for any of you who are new to my site, I just want to introduce my website to y'all. It's www.southerndutchgirlart.com. Uh, that's where I have all my artwork, except for like the last month or two worth of work. Um, anything you've seen on videos from like the past month or two aren't isn't it on there because um, I haven't finished those pieces yet. But I mean, I can finish them in a day if I need to. But I was just kind of waiting for a nice warm day and. <laughs> Sometimes I get to where I start painting and I can't stop painting just to finish the pieces. So uh, anyway, if you haven't checked out my website, check out my website. It's got all my work on there. It's got paintings. It has um, these little tiles that are covered in resin uh, for coasters. It has pendants on there um, that I'm probably going to add uh, beaded necklaces to because they look cool like that. And they're a lot prettier once they're finished. So, check me out if you haven't checked me out. Um, and my email address is heatherwright521 at yahoo.com. So, if anyone wants to send me any um, artwork that you've worked on, that's awesome. I love to see y'all's artwork. Um, this uh, lovely lady sent me her artwork um, just yesterday and <laughs> put me to shame. It was gorgeous. It was really, I was really. Really excited to see it. It was really pretty. Um, she had used the string technique, but she had done it over um, a pour. So it was really, really cool. So I'm going to try that myself um, sometime in the next probably month or so. I don't know um, when I'll actually do it, but it's on my list of things to try. So, um, yeah. So, you know, if you got any questions or comments or you just want to send me your artwork, that's my email address. Or if there's anything of mine you'd like to purchase, you can also email me. So today, what I'm planning to do is a how I make my pendants video um, from the very beginning, well, almost the very beginning, to um, beading a pendant. Uh, I just want to show you how I do it, what my materials my materials are, and that way, um, you know, if you're if it's if it seems like it's a little bit of a daunting task to you, you'll see that it's really easy. It's just a you know a few steps and. You know, this stuff turns out like really super cool. So give it a try. If you haven't tried making any kind of pendants yet, um, let me show you one that I have finished. Um, let's see, there we go. That was just a simple one. Um, just some pretty beads that match the, uh, the painting inside. This was a real simple painting piece that I had done. Um, and I think this was like one that I had poured like in the very beginning of starting this. So it's not a real exciting <laughs> little painting, but I like it. Um, and doing the beadwork, finding all these pretty beads, are, it's, you know, it's fun to do. So give it a try. So, um, materials. I have got all of these pendants are everything. I have all of this stuff up here I've glued down. Now this was actually one that I did... In the very beginning, it's like one of the first ones I poured. And then something happened and it got a huge like air bubble here, like two hours after I poured this resin, which this is not the resin that I'm going to be pouring with today. Um, this is the re the first resin I was using. I'm using a different resin for this pour today. And I'll, I'll show you that when, when we get to the resin stage. Um, but anyway, it got a big uh, air bubble in it. And so when it popped, it's got this giant hole in it. And then when it was uh, still wet, I dropped my torch in it. The torch went smack over on top of it and it was real sticky. So when I pulled the torch up, it pulled all the resin up and it was looking bad. So I spent a couple days trying to sand most of it down. It's nice and smooth now. It still has a little hole right there. So I'm gonna try to pour resin over. It's still kind of um, 
rounded, so I'm not entirely sure the resin is not just going to pour off the side. But I'm hoping because I, I kind of like the pattern in there. So that's what that one is. Um, these all have, I just glued these down today. Those two are uh, ones that my little ones, actually those are, are swipes that my little ones did. Um, that one's Nora's and that one's Ella's. They did those and they picked out the spot that they wanted to use for their pendants. So that's what those are. Uh, and these are just the different some of the different pendants that I have. I also have some bottle caps, but I don't really care for the bottle caps. Um, I got a circle punch for it because I thought that would be easier because I can't really cut a straight circle. But it's actually a little bit too small for the bottle cap, so you can kind of see the, the rim around the edge. This is the, the uh, I think this was just a swipe where I, I put um, paint on here and then I put two cards together and I pulled them off like this. And this one turned out pretty cool. So this is the one I'm going to use today. These are my little templates that I've made. They're just little paint samples that I have cut out to match, you know, the size of the pendants there. And, um, yeah, that's what I'm going to use today, obviously, is the big one. Because I want to use a big section of this because I think that looks cool. These are what I use to cut this out. So what I do is I'm going to find, um, you know, the right spot. It's so much easier if you make a template instead of just, you know, kind of looking at this and then putting this over here and hoping you got a, a cool spot. Make a template. It's really easy to make. Um, just take your, your pendant and set it down on the thing, draw around it, and then you're going to want to cut a little bit inside the line because obviously, you know, you're only going to here with your actual painting. So, you know, just jam your scissors in there and cut, cut it cut it out so it matches your your pendant and then then you can move around because see that's that's kind of cool but then and see that one's like definitely not I don't I don't like the solid yellow and the solid blue that's getting there those are kind of cool I like those cells right there so what I'm really deciding on is like right about there I think that's pretty cool I love these cells they're all they're like three different colors inside of them so um, that's where I'm going to cut. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure I've got it exactly where I want it. And I'm going to take my little thing that I cut out. And I already made sure that it fit perfectly inside my pendant. That way, when I set it down on top of this, I'm going to set it down perfectly right over where I want to cut out. I'm going to hold it real tight. Move a little template out of the way. And then I'm just going to cut around it. I got these tiny little scissors. They're hair cutting scissors. And they're really skinny. And they work really, really well for this. Because you want this to be absolutely perfect. Because if it's not, then you're going to be trimming it. And, and then you end up messing it up. Which is upsetting sometimes because, you know, sometimes you um, <laughs> you cut th through a piece that you wanted to save. and uh, Or you cut just a little bit too much off the edge and it's really upsetting. Make sure once you do the first two cuts that your corners line up. Because sometimes the little piece will move underneath there with the scissors when you're doing these big ones. So you got to kind of be careful. Okay, that looks like it might end up being a touch big. Okay, so we've got our little cool little card here. It's going to make a pretty neat pendant. And then you got to kind of decide, do I want it like that or do I want it like that? I think I'm just going to leave it, I don't know, like that. All right, so I can feel that it's a tad, a tad big, which I kind of figured it was going to, going to be because it won't fit down in there. You want it to fit down in there, but you want it to be kind of snug, but not too snug because then it'll kind of curl up on the edges. So we are going to trim off just a hair off the top. You need to be really careful when you do this because you can completely ruin your little thing. All right, that's almost, almost perfect. There, you can kind of see it's really fitting in. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not, but you can see that it's kind of fitting in there real well. But it still feels like it's a little wide 
on maybe this side. So we're going to trim just a hair off of this side. I hope y'all can see what I'm doing. I hope I'm not like off screen. I'm real bad about getting off screen. I'm really, I apologize for that. So, and there we go. You can see it fits really perfectly. So then I'm going to take, I'll take that out of there if I can get it out. There we go. I'm going to move all the stuff out of the way because we don't want to accidentally get glue in anything. Keep all your little things together. Um, two little nifty tools to have to have around are a Q-tip, which you don't want to have to use too much because, you know, you don't want the fuzz sticking to your glue. And this little stick, um, I really can't tell you where to get them because I actually got them out of my kids' Valentine's cards that they were um, sitting around school. They, were, they had these neat little Valentine's cards this year where you can, like, scratch into a black surface and there's the color underneath. They're, they're the etching ones. So this is a neat little stick. But, you know, I mean, any stick will do, really. Just something with a point on it so you can get into the corners if you need to. And this is just, in case you put too much glue on here, you can kind of get it off out of the corners. <coughs> Excuse me. My glue. Uh, this is the Diamond Glaze. I bought this off of Amazon. So um, it's supposed to be really awesome. And uh, it dries clear. So if, you know, some of your glue comes up around the edges, once it dries, it's clear, and then you pour the resin over it and you never see it. So uh, it dries, you know, just let it sit overnight. Make sure your stuff is dry before you pour the resin over it. So you're just going to take a tiny little bit. You got a real thin thing. I usually stick a needle down in here before I start uh, to open up that hole because sometimes they'll close up. And then you're just going to make sure you get a little bit. You do not want to put too much of this stuff on there because it will squeeze out. But you just want to make sure you kind of get it down into the corners there. And then kind of just slather it around. And then we're going to put our little, I feel like it needs to go like that. But I th I'm not sure if it'll go in there like that. I don't know, I kind of like it like that too. I don't think it much matters. And the reason you want to make sure that uh, the edges are covered, like around these edges, is because if they're not, you're going to get air bubbles that come up from underneath your painting and creep up into the resin while it's drying. And sometimes you will end up with a bubble in your resin when you're all done. And it is upsetting, to say the least. All right, so... I like to mash mine down. I try not to get my fingers into the glue because um, it dries on your, this particular glue dries on your fingers like super glue and it takes a couple days to, for it to wear off of me. So um, I like to use the, the little point to make sure all my corners are put down. And a lot of times with these, if I cut it just right, I can just sort of go along uh, the edges here and make sure my edges are down because I think this one I actually cut pretty good. So I don't really need this, but I like to use the flat end of this just to sort of, if I see where there's a piece, you know, the side is coming up, just kind of go along the edge there, mash it down gently because you don't, obviously you don't want to scratch your little painting, but you do want your, your um, picture to be flat because once you pour the resin in there, if it's not completely flat to the, to the bezel, then you're going to kind of see that it's a little concave in there. So you just want to kind of look at the edges and see that it is all nice and flat. And I don't see, there's not a lot of glue coming up, so I'm not going to need my Q-tip. But just be careful with your Q-tip if you're trying to get the glue out. You do not want to leave the, you know, the furry in your pendant. So, this is uh, where we are now needing our resin. So we're going to get our resin. We're going to mix it up. Uh, and pour it into the bezels. Okay, so I've got my pendant set up. I have my resin. I haven't mixed it up yet because I just wanted to, you know, show y'all how, how I mix the resin. I am using the Envirotex Light Pour On uh, resin. I was using a different kind of resin, um, but I went to use this one just to try it because a lot of other people were using this one. Um, and it actually doesn't smell nearly as bad 
as the other resin I was using and it actually does dry a hint uh, clearer. It doesn't have that sort of yellowy tinge. Just the slight hint of a yellowy tinge on some things um, that the last one was. So I really, I like this one better. Plus with this one, the air bubbles were so much easier to get out. I've only poured it on one thing so far. I haven't poured it in any pendants yet, but today I'm going to. Um, I did pour it on a six by six inch tile uh, and it was just gorgeous. I was, <laughs> I, I was so in love with it and um, so apparently some, somebody else was too and she bought it from me. So it, um, it got shipped over to Germany. Uh, I think I've said that before, but I was, I'm just, I'm still totally excited about it. So, uh, yeah, um, it really looked beautiful and it, it puts this beautiful shine. And like I said, the air bubbles come out of this way easier. So you have your hardener and you've got your resin and it's a one to one ratio. So it's real simple. Um, I just use these little, these little, um, these are actually ketchup cups from somewhere. I can't remember which place I got these from. Um, but I just, <laughs> I just bring them home and wash them out. You know, they work awesome. Um, and, uh, they're 30 milliliters a piece. So I'm hoping that 60 milliliters is enough to do all these pendants since I haven't done it too many times. You know, I'm not exactly sure about the, um, about the, uh, the ratio of, you know, how much I'm going to need. Um, you're going to pour your resin into your little cup, make sure it's on a flat, even surface, level surface. And like I said, it's a one to one ratio. So if you set them right next to each other, even if they don't have little measurement marks, I mean, you can just do, you can eyeball it and you'll get it. And I am basically just filling this to the rim. And I've got a tile sitting over there just in case I have too much resin. I don't think I'm going to have that much too much resin left over there, so I probably won't have enough to pour over that tile. So you're mixing this. Um, you're going to mix your hardener into your resin. So I just measure both of those, exactly the same amounts of each. Now with your also with your um, your resin and your hardener, you want to make sure that they're a nice warm temperature, not hot, but they need to be a warm temperature. So if uh, your house is cold or your studio is cold, resin goes in first, then you can set the bottles in a, just a uh, you know, pan full of warm, nice warm water and just let them sit for 10 or 15 minutes so they warm up and uh, you know, it works really well. <clears throat> okay, so there is all the resin and now the hardener goes into the resin and I'm not sure why it really matters if you pour the resin into the hardener or the hardener into the resin since you're fixing to mix them up anyway. But that's what the instructions say, so that's what I'm doing. And i got to be really careful because I don't want to drip the unmixed resin on my pendants. So now I'm going to mix for two minutes and then I'm going to pour it into another cup and mix it for another two minutes. That just ensures that you've got all your all your resin, you know, mixed up. There's none clinging to the sides of the cup that's not going to get mixed up. You pour your your mixed resin into um, into another cup and just keep mixing. And uh, you know, scrape the sides down. Mixing up the resin, you know, so, uh, there's a few people out there that are kind of scared of of dealing with the resin, but really you don't need to be. Just make sure you're in a well ventilated area. You really should be wearing a mask on your face. Uh, to make sure you're not inhaling the fumes. Um, and if you have lots of money, you can uh, buy the expensive resin that's supposed to be non-toxic and, you know, I won't say healthy for you, but it's supposed to be way better for you than some of the other resins out there. So um, just, you know, take all your safety precautions. You want to make sure you live a nice, long, healthy life. So, all right, I'm going to continue stirring this and I will be back in a minute when the resin is completely mixed okay my resin is all mixed make sure you're all in focus uh, my resin is all mixed uh, it's been you know four minutes um, make sure you have gloves on because this stuff is stickier than like cotton candy 
And it's like way worse than uh, super glue trying to get it off your hands. So um, what I do is I wear two pairs of gloves that, because you, you really, what if the phone rings, you know, or, you know, you, you get really messy with this sometimes, not with the pendants necessarily, but when you're pouring on the tiles and you're trying to get all the, the resin out from underneath the X, you know, the edges of the tile, you tend to get messy. So, um, you know, wear two pairs of gloves that way. If you need to take one off for some reason, you know, you've already got another pair on. You don't have to go put another pair on. Um, and you can see there's a lot of bubbles in here. I don't know if you can really see them or not, but there's a lot of bubbles, but they really do come to the surface pretty quick. And um, after about 15, it says after about 15 minutes, um, then you can torch them or you can really just blow, you know, warm air on them. And uh, the resin should, all the bubbles should pop. So I'm going to start pouring little bits at a time. I just use my stick and I just kind of dabble into the thing and kind of let it spread out on its own. And uh, yeah, so let's get started here. And, um, you know, while I'm doing this, I want to say <laughs> um, I got it. I got a. Uh, well, this is hard to do while I'm talking. And I'm just going to pour it in there, kind of let it level out on its own. Um, and you don't want to pour in too much at a time because if you end up uh, going over the edges, oh, it's just a nightmare because it sticks to the, you know, you might as well kiss your little pendant goodbye because um, it does not, it pretty much sticks to the wood, obviously. You don't want it to be underfilled because you don't want it to be like a concave, um, a concave pendant. It looks better with you know, sort of a uh, rounded top to it, but you got to be really careful because you can put too much in there. And then it it will spill over and there's really no saving it after that. It just looks kind of messy after that. And you just kind of push it around a little bit, um, give it a little bit of help, and as it sits there and you run your torch over it, it'll kind of level out. You just want to make sure it gets into the corners real good. And all along the edges. Okay, so while I'm doing this, I want to say, um, you know, I always tell y'all, send me an email if you want to share your paintings with me. Uh, well, it turns out that, um, you know, everybody kind of knows they have a spam folder, but I'm one of those people I never look in my spam folder because every time I've looked at my spam folder, all it is is junk. Um, so I, like, really just completely forget that I even have it. And uh, somebody said to me, uh, they sent me an email and she didn't get a response. And I was so bummed to hear that. I went through all my emails, but I did not even think to look through the spam folder. So I sent her, you know, a little comment back. I was sorry, you know, please send me the email again. But then I thought, oh, wait a minute. I've got a, you know, a junk folder. Maybe it's in there. And opened it up. And the first thing I saw was her email. I was so excited. And so happy I found it. So Barbara, I'm really sorry um, that I didn't see it right away. And from now on, I will make sure to check my spam folder every other day so that I don't miss anybody's email. But if y'all send me an email, um, leave me a comment in like my latest video or it doesn't really matter any video. Leave me a comment in the videos because that goes straight, you know, it pops up on my phone immediately. And that way I can make sure I get your email because I would never ever not respond to y'all you know if it weren't for y'all i wouldn't be here and uh, i appreciate each and every one of you so barbara again i'm so sorry uh please forgive me okay so i'm gonna finish these up and then i'm gonna do that off screen so you're not watching me do this for 20 minutes and i'll be right back Okay, so you can see I've moved a few things around. I have poured resin in all of these. I actually end up having to more, make some more resin because um, once I got done with just this square right here, my resin was starting to harden really quick. It's a lot warmer in here than the last time I poured resin, so it's setting a lot faster. So when I got to here, I just went ahead and poured over my tile 
as you can see I don't want to move it around too much so it doesn't so it doesn't move around but um, I've pour, I poured it over, I poured the rest of that first batch over this tile so we are keeping it under cover and torching it every couple of minutes until we no longer see air bubbles um, and after I turn the video off I I spilled a little bit of resin on the little thing so I'm gonna I'm gonna have these little pendants all glued together all right so you can kind of see this should turn out kind of cool so let me get you down so you can see and then on to the next step once these are dry they uh, have to set up for at least 72 hours um, to get the full hardness effect so because of the temperature that it is uh, so we will let these dry for a few days and then I will be back um, and of course it will be momentarily on the video because I'll just attach all the videos together so let me get you down so you can see okay there they are all resined that one right there I don't know if y'all are familiar with um, zebra fruit strike fruit stripe gum but that's what that looks like to me is the zebra fruit stripe gum and you can see I have just you know some different kinds you know obviously you see cells in that little purple and blue one right there and that one and those but then that one is just stripes but it was pretty and I liked it and those are kind of kind of watercolory and then of course you got one that blue and white one is just lacing and those are um I'm not really, even really sure what to call those. That's where you mash your um, your paper to get you fold it in half and mash it really hard, and it it puts these weird sort of veins throughout. And these two right there are kind of they're uh, with metallic paints, so maybe once they dry, we can you can kind of see them a little better. And then there are the two. That top one, the one with mostly red, that's the one I try, I'm try. i trying to fix. So hopefully it will not, um, so hopefully it'll, it'll dry correctly. And then there's the one we glued um, earlier in the video. And uh, looking pretty good, so. All right, and then I got a few over there. So I'm gonna leave you with this for the moment and we will be back to bead the pendant. Okay, hi guys, I'm back, and it has been several days since we have poured the resin over the pendants uh, and also that uh, six by six inch tile, um, which by the way, turned out pretty cool. Uh, let me see if I can kind of show you the reflection off of it, see there? Oh, that one turned out, let me see if I can get you in focus there, there we go. Okay, so, turned out pretty cool. Um, nice, clean glass like reflection so like I said this is the six by six tile and um, yeah it's just a decorative little piece of art we can put a little a little o-ring or a little catch on the back of this to hang it on the wall just like in a tight space somewhere or, you know maybe in the bathroom or something where you don't want to hang like regular art but like this will be fine because it's just a tile um, and it's been sealed with resin and the resin is heat resistant and waterproof so um, yeah, so there's the tile. Turned out pretty cool. And then the pendant we were working on, that one turned out um, actually pretty nice. You can see the uh, reflection there is like, like glass. There's like one little tiny <laughs> speck of dust somewhere in there, but you can't really see it. So um, it turned out really pretty. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I bead the necklace. And it's like super simple. I just put a little O-ring at the top uh, so it'll, you know, hang straight. But um, that's, the, that's the pendant we were working on. So it turned out well. Um, the other pendant that we were working on that I had told you like completely got messed up and it... Um, you know, I dropped my torch in it. It worked pretty well. You can kind of see, like right along here, the resin kind of 
went over the edge right here a little bit. So there's just like a, a slight indention right here. You can kind of see it when you see the reflection. But it's all covered in resin. And uh, it actually turned out way better than I'd hoped. And I managed to save it. So, um, you know, I don't know. I could maybe sell this for a discounted price or maybe I'll beat it and, and you know, wear it around town. Who knows? Um, if anybody wants this one, of course, it's for sale. Everything I do is for sale. So, uh, so let's, um, I think that's all I got to show you for the moment. So let's get started with our beading of our necklace. All right, and this right here, this is just, <laughs> this is, um, it actually came with a kit that I bought for my girls. Um, this little beading palette. It has this indention here where you can straight put all your beads into so you can kind of line them up the way you want to. Um, much easier than just like beading as you go along. So you can kind of see and you can rearrange. I mean, I spent like, I don't know how long <laughs> I spent <laughs> rearranging these beads to get them, um, you know, kind of how I wanted them to go. And I'm still not convinced this is exactly the way they're going to end up on the necklace. But um, as you can see, I tried to pick out <clears throat> um, accent colors to go with the, uh, you know, the pendant there. So I've got my lobster claw clasp there and then a little O-ring on both sides. And then I've got the two little crimping beads and then I've got my wire down below and my pretty beads that I picked out and that's all you need. So let's get started. I'm gonna set that down there. <clears throat> I've got a, a shirt laid out because um, I don't want my beads to go flying everywhere. Um, yeah, because <laughs> we had we had uh, a fun cleanup project the other day. My little ones were um, kind of helping me, and we have this giant. I don't know how many beads are in here. Um, I don't think it even says. There's like a billion of them in here, and. Uh, I had it sitting open, but the cover was still closed over it. And uh, my little one, Nora, decided to come pick it up. And I said, no, set that down. And she, she decided to pick it up anyway. And all these beads went all over the kitchen floor. So we spent an hour cleaning 9 billion beads off the kitchen floor. But, oh well. I told her, I said, it's not a tragedy. <laughs> she was a little upset about it. I said, no, it's not a tragedy. No big deal. So what I've got here is my wire. Um, this is 0.46 millimeters or 0 0.018 inches. I was using the 0.3, but um, after my child um, broke her bracelet twice with that, I decided to use a, a little thicker wire. It's a little stiffer, but it's still got lots of flexibility in, in it. So, um, And what I'll do is I'll hold both sides at the same time, and I'll bead both sides so that I know I'm getting them in the same order. Because if I try just going from one side, then I'm going to end up, uh, <laughs> I'm going to end up having like five red beads on one side and then 12 red beads on the other. And it's just not going to work. So I've got, like I said, I've got my beads set up. Um, so I'm going to start from this end and I used, to, I just like to put a few on there and then hold it up to see if I like the way the pattern is going. Um, I did one a while back, a few weeks ago, and I really didn't like the pattern at all. So I had to completely take it apart and start over again. And trying to find the holes in some of these beads is really difficult. You can't even see the hole there. There we go. And that one's difficult to do. This is going to take a while. I'm not going to string the whole, <laughs> the whole set of beads on here for y'all to watch because you'll get really bored. So I'm just going to string a few on. I'll show you what it looks like. And then I'll come back with it all completely finished. Okay, that's getting heavy, so I need to drop that. So let's do the other side real quick. And then we'll kind of hold it up and you can kind of see what it's starting to look like. I didn't realize these little round purple beads were going to be so hard to... Uh, find the hole for. And 
Um, I usually try and like, um, I'll usually, if I want to, I'll take the, uh, the pendant with me to the store so I can kind of match bead colors to it. But, um, the resin was still kind of tacky on the pendant when I went to the store. So I just wrote down the colors that I needed. I figured, oh, no problem. So I had, um, because this pendant is, it's mostly red and purple with a little bit of lavender. And then there's a hint of yellow in there and a hint of sort of a, a robin's egg blue. So I thought, no problem. Easy enough to find yellow, um, yellow beads and robin's egg blue beads. I went to three different stores. The big ones, not, you know, the big chain stores that, sh that have like 9 million beads. And I thought, no problem. I couldn't find any robin's egg blue and I couldn't find any sort of a creamy yellow. So I'm going with, uh, you know, the closest thing I could find, which is a darker blue and sort of a, a more lemony yellow, but because there's not a lot of Robin's egg blue in here and there's definitely not a lot of yellow, as long as it's just a little bit of accent, they actually, you know, went pretty well. All right. I'm going to put a few more colors on here real quick and then I will give you a show of what it looks like. Because you got to have all the colors on there to really tell if that's how you really want to start it off. Because I'm not entirely sure I want those big beads um, right up next to that big pendant. I don't know yet. So, put them on there and see. Alright. I'm a little stressed today because my little Ella, my Ella, we call her Ella Bella. She is, what did I do? I did something. Nope. I did not. I forgot to put, um, put the yellow on the wrong side. My little Ella Bella, she's nine. Um, and she's been asking for about a year now to get her hair cut. And I, I always said, I've always had short hair and I've always had, you know, problems with people being mean to me, especially when I was a kid in school. When I was, when I was little, my older sister took me behind the kitchen door and she chopped all my hair off. My mom was so upset at first, but she decided she liked it. So she kept my hair short. So all of my young life, I had short hair and I always got made fun of for it. So I vowed that when I had kids, if I had little girls, I was never going to cut their hair because I didn't want them to go through what I had gone through. So back to my story, my little one, my little Ella has been asking for a year now to cut her hair. And I have been so dead set against it because you know, I just didn't, didn't want no, I didn't want her to get made fun of in school because kids can be so mean. But we decided, you know, she's nine years old. <clears throat> she thinks she's, uh, you know, all grown up now. And, <coughs> excuse me, we decided to let her get her hair cut. Um, and, uh, we, you know, we let her know this last night. So I'm supposed to take her today to get her hair cut. And I'm kind of freaking out about it. Um, because she's got this long, beautiful hair and I, um, yeah, just a little worried about it. <laughs> so I'm a little stressed today. So if I'm kind of talking disjointedly, um, I apologize. Okay. So here we are so far. I think, um, I think I kind of like these bigger beads down near the down near the um the pendant because the pendant is so big if it was one of these smaller pendants you know like that that would those would just be too overwhelming i think but since it's such a big pendant this is probably i want to say it's about an inch across and then two and a half inches long down i think so i think that that's going to work so i am going to continue to work on this and then i will be back when i've got it all beaded up Okay, so <clears throat> I have finished beading and I put the clasp around it. So let me give you a close-up of the beads. Let's see if we can get that in focus. There we go. There's our pendant, our pretty shiny pendant. And the beadwork. And there's the clasp. Let me get it apart. There we go. See? 
I'm getting it kind of twisted there. There we go. Okay, now you can kind of see. The end is real simple. Um, you just feed a little... I can't remember what it's called. It's a little ring that you smash <laughs> with pliers. Put, you feed that through the wire, then you feed your little O-ring through the wire, and then you feed the wire back through the little that little silver piece that you smash with pliers. Then you feed it, um, then you smash it with pliers to hold the wire and uh, feed the rest of the wire through the bead so it, it's hidden. And um, yeah, that's it. Very simple, really. And um, there's the finished product. This one, I can't remember how long it is. It's pretty long. It hangs probably, I'd say, at, at least a good... Well, let's measure it real quick. We got a little... Okay, so we've got 7, 14, so that's 28. So it's about 28 inches uh, without the pendant. So the pendant's going to add another 2 inches, but it's about 28 inches um, around your neck. So, yeah, there it is. I hope y'all... Um, enjoyed watching my pendant video. Uh, if you've got any questions, leave them in the comments, or of course you can email me. I love to get emails from y'all. Um, and if you see any pendants that I have done that I don't have, you know, the beadwork done on, um, you know, if you want one of these pendants, they're all available for purchase, of course. And, um, you know, if you see a pendant that you like and, uh, you know, you want me to bead it for you, then just let me know which pendant you like and um, we can get you taken care of. So there we go. There's your pretty for today. Wherever you are on the planet, I hope you have an awesome afternoon, day, evening, or night. See you later. Bye.